Hi, welcome to Bookie. To unlock more world-class bestseller, please download our app. Just search for B-O-O-K-E-Y at Apple Store or Google Play. You will get 7 days free trail with more features. Today we will unlock the book Genghis Khan and the Making of the Modern World. Genghis Khan, who lived in the 13th century, is one of the most eminent statesmen and militarists in world history. It took him a mere 25 years to occupy about one-third of the world, and realize the dream of conquest, that the Romans failed to do in 400 years. Almost 800 years has passed since his time. Why do we say that he still has a profound impact on today's world? Actually, Genghis Khan's legacies can be found in many aspects of the modern society. These include among others, nations' borders, politics, technology, war, commerce, clothing, art, literature, language, and music. For instance, in terms of national territory, China largely inherited the territory of the Yuan dynasty, whose founder was Kublai Khan, Genghis Khan's grandson. In terms of war, the Mongols invented Blitzkrieg, which was used by the Germans in the Second World War. In terms of food, the powdered milk we all like to drink, was invented by the Mongols. In terms of language, the word hooray in English was transliterated from the exclamation by the Mongols. In terms of technology, the Mongols brought printing, gunpowder, and the compass to Europe. Of the three inventions, the invention of printing laid the foundation for the Renaissance in Europe. The invention of gunpowder brought about the military revolution in Europe. The invention of the compass was of even greater significance. If it were not for the compass, there would not have been the big maritime navigation era, nor would there have been global colonialism, or the present world order. Hence, Genghis Khan had a great influence on the order of the world today. So how did he do it? The book Genghis Khan and the Making of the Modern World unveils the answer. The author of this book is Jack Weatherford, a famous American expert on Mongolian history in the Yuan dynasty. He is a PhD graduate of anthropology from the University of California San Diego, and the first scholar to obtain an honorary doctorate in anthropology from the Chinggis Khan University in Mongolia. He is also the first scholar to study Mongolian history from the perspective of anthropology. To write this book, the author spent 13 years, and traveled in at least 8 countries, and studied the history of the Mongol Empire along the route of Genghis Khan's conquest. Finally, he managed to complete this book. We will now explain to you how Genghis Khan influenced the modern world in three parts. Part 1 Who was Genghis Khan? Part 2 What route did Genghis Khan take to conquer the world? Part 3 How did Genghis Khan influence today's world order? Alright. Let's first get to Part 1. Who was Genghis Khan? Genghis Khan was born in 1162 in the Hinti Mountains, which is near the border of today's Mongolia and Siberia. During this period, the activities of the Mongolian tribes were limited to a very small area in the northeast of Mongolia. There were many tribes in this small region, big and small. Wars often broke out between tribes for the purpose of seizing property and kidnapping women. That's what happened to Genghis Khan's mother, when she was kidnapped by his father, Yeshuge. Genghis Khan's mother was Ho Lun, and Chilidu was her first husband. After their wedding, Chilidu took Ho Lun back to his own tribe, but Ho Lun was kidnapped on their way back home. While passing a valley, they met a hunter, who was taken with Ho Lun's beauty, so he then decided to take her home. Immediately, he rode back to his camp, and plotted with his two brothers to help with the kidnapping. Ironically, this hunter, who was planning on kidnapping Ho Lun was Genghis Khan's father Yeshuge. While fleeing from the attack of the hunters, Chili Du and Ho Lun found themselves driven into corners with no way out. If they were caught, Chili Du would be killed by Yeshuge for sure. Ho Lun didn't want to see her husband killed, so she convinced Chili Du to flee alone. While she stayed and surrendered. She told him, if you live, there will be maidens for you, on every front and in every cart. You can find another woman to be your bride, and you can call her Ho Lun in place of me. Chili Du had no choice but to grab Ho Lun's clothes, slowly walking away, 
looking back every step he took. Taking Ho Lun home, Ye Shuge then made her his second wife. They had no idea that this kidnapping would change not only the fate of Ho Lun, but also the fate of the whole world. After being kidnapped, in the year 1162, Ho Lun gave birth to Genghis Khan. According to the legend, when Genghis Khan was born, he was tightly clutching something in his right hand. His mother gently pried back his fingers one by one, to find a piece of blood clot as hard as iron. Shortly after he kidnapped Ho Lun, Yeshuge went on a campaign against the Tatars and killed a warrior, called Temujin Ua. This inspired him to name his son Temujin. According to a Mongol belief, if a baby happens to be born when a warrior of an opposing tribe is caught, the warrior's courage will be transferred onto the baby. This was how Genghis Khan's original name Temujin came about. Genghis Khan was the title of Temujin after he united Mongolia. Khan refers to the Khan of the Mongols, and Genghis means strong, and the sea in Mongolia. When Genghis Khan was nine years old, Yeshuge found him his future wife, Bort. Years later, he took Genghis Khan, and left him to work at Bort's house, and Yeshuge set out to return to the tribe by himself. On the long ride home alone after leaving his son, Yeshuge happened upon an encampment, where the Tatars were celebrating a feast. The Tatars and the Yeshuge family had a long dispute, because the Tatars killed Yeshuge's uncle, and Yeshuge killed Temujin Ua, a leader of the Tatars, when Genghis Khan was born. By step tradition, it's impolite for someone to decline a party invitation, when they come across someone else having one. So Yeshuge concealed his identity, and joined the Tatars' feast. Despite his attempted deceit, someone apparently recognized him, and secretly poisoned him. Yeshuge died, and left behind two wives and seven children under the age of ten. Even worse, at this time, the clan, on which they had been depending abandoned their whole family mercilessly, and left them to die on their own. Genghis Khan's mother Ho Lun, although deserted, made a monumental effort to support her family, feeding her children by collecting small fruits, and digging wild vegetables every day. Step by step, Genghis Khan began to learn hunting, and provided food for the family. In the meantime, Genghis Khan had to endure being bullied by his half-brother. Under the Mongol marriage system, if a man dies, the eldest son of the family can inherit their father's women excluding their mother. The eldest son of Yeshuge was Bigdur, a child born of Yeshuge and another wife. By step tradition, Bigdur could become Ho Lun's husband when he was old enough to support the family. Genghis Khan found it very hard to accept this. Besides being bullied by Bigdur all the time, Genghis Khan hated him to the bone. According to another book Secret History, Genghis Khan once caught some fish, and Bigdur took it away for no reasons. This enraged Genghis Khan, and as a result he and Bigdur fought. Genghis violently struck and killed him in the wild. It is a crime in the steppe tradition, to murder one's own sibling. Genghis Khan had violated the law, so he was captured by the clan, and put in jail for more than ten years. During this period, a number of servant families who were captured in the war took good care of Genghis Khan. He did not only get food, but he also found sympathy and comfort among them. There was even an old woman, who often gently tended to his wounds. One day, when the people of the tribe got drunk, Genghis Khan knocked out the negligent guards and escaped his prison. When the guards were searching for him, an old man of the family that had treated him kindly, hid him in a pile of wool. This allowed Genghis Khan to finally escape captivity. After a series of misfortunes, Genghis Khan saw that kinship was not reliable. The clan related to him had deserted him and his family. Whereas another family who were not related to him, risked their lives to help him. These experiences had a substantial influence on Genghis Khan's decision-making from that point on. He no longer counted on kinship to establish his own power foundation. Instead, he broke the strict social hierarchy in the steppe tradition, and chose to rely on trusted partners, forming an alliance with them, and established his core power. This was a brand new and revolutionary power structure in the steppe tradition. It was this power structure that laid the foundation for the rise of Genghis Khan. When Genghis Khan was growing up, he met his first reliable buddy Jamaka. 
Unfortunately, Jamaka was not only Genghis Khan's first trusted friend, but also became his first powerful enemy on his path to power expansion in the future. Jamaka and Genghis Khan had made their vows of sworn brotherhood since childhood. Together they played, practiced writing, and held the oath swearing ceremony three times. They swore an oath of eternal brotherhood, becoming Andis according to the Mongol tradition. Sadly, reality was cruel. Their relationship didn't last. Genghis Khan and Jamaka were both heroes. Jamaka was the leader of his own tribe, and Genghis Khan was not one to accept being treated as inferior for long. Their conflict was exposed in a tribal migration. Jamaka told Genghis Khan that he himself should take the horses and camp closer to the mountains. While Genghis Khan should take the less prestigious sheep and goats, and set up another camp. In this way, Jamaka wanted to let Genghis Khan know that he was the real leader. This event marked the break of friendship between Genghis Khan and Jamaka. From then on, they each set out on their own. Eight years later, the warfare between Genghis Khan and Jamaka began, lasting for 20 years and Genghis Khan finally won. Through this war, Temujin unified Mongolia, and became the real king of the tribes living in the Mongolian grasslands. All tribes began to call him Genghis Khan. That was the first part. We introduced the background in which Genghis Khan was born, and how he grew up. When Genghis Khan was born, the Mongol steppe was in a state of division. And tribes no matter how big or small, were fighting frequently for property and women. When growing up, Genghis Khan had experienced several major events. His father was killed. He and his family were deserted by the clan. He was bullied by his half-brother, imprisoned by the clan, rescued by people who were not related to him, and met his first sworn brother in his life. All these things made Genghis Khan strong and resolute, which enabled him to unite Mongolia and conquer the world. Today we are just sharing limited bookie. To unlock more key insights of world-class bestseller, please download our app. Just search for B-O-O-K-E-Y at Apple Store or Google Play. You will get 7 days free trail with more features.